On this episode of Bacon Jake, I'm going to teach you how to make chewy pretzels, or brezel, as it is known in Germany. The definition of brezel, or pretzel, is a crisp, dry biscuit or cracker. The ones I'm making today are the type you usually see vendors selling on the street. The outer shell is a nice mahogany brown and is generally topped with a color of salt. The outer part has some slight resistance as you bite into it, and then you get a wonderful fluffy interior which should be a slightly moist and have a yeasty flavor. Generally, these are made in that distinct knot shape, but you can make almost any shape you wish. It is believed that the loop pretzel originally originated in Italy where a monk would give the strips of baked dough to children who learned their prayers. For those who don't know, people used to pray with their arms crossed like this, rather than like this, thus the shape of the pretzel. There are many other theories of the pretzel's origin, but this is the most common one. Over time, this yeast-raised baked good found its way to Germany, where it became a big hit. Now Germany is probably one of the biggest producers of pretzels. Over time, it branched off in cultures, adapted it into many things. One of my favorite is the American pizza pretzel, but today I'm just going to make the good old pretzel. Okay, today we are going to make the soft pretzels. You will need a tablespoon of sugar, Four and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half a stick of butter, two-thirds cup of baking soda, two teaspoons of salt, a package of dry yeast, vegetable oil, an egg, one and a half cups of warm water, and ten cups of water, which I will get out of the tap. Okay, we put some water, we put one and a half cups of water in the microwave for about 10 seconds, get up to about 50, 115 degrees. We are going to pour this into our mixer's work bowl. Yes, thank you, right here. We are going, we are going to add a tablespoon of sugar. Thank you, Father. Two teaspoons of, co of salt, whatever type you choose. One. Two, yes, two. We're gonna put this, we're gonna gently mix this. Thank you, Father. Okay, that is good. Now we are going to sprinkle the package of yeast over the warm water. The warm water should activate it and make it fart. Yes, that is what yeast does, it farts to make air bubbles. <laughs> Whole package. Whole package. Should be good. Mm. That should be good. Yeah. Now we're gonna mix this up some more. And we we'll let that set for five minutes. Okay, now that the yeast has had time to sit in the water and activate and will basically fart, you should see air bubbles in your Mm. Mixture. Yes. Mixture. And to that, we're going to put it on low speed, about two or three with your dough hook. And you're going to add one half stick or one fourth cup or two ounces of butter, however you want to know it is. We have that mixing in there. And now you're going to slowly incorporate four and a half cups or 22 ounces of all-purpose flour. It is always better to measure by by weight Whoa. than it is to do Whoa. volume. I do not have a, a scale so I, I have to do it by volume. Maybe you have a scale, use a scale, measure 22 ounces. Okay, once you've blended it to the consistency of a, a sticky dough, you're going to want to turn it up to medium speed and let everything mixed together well, form gluten, and it'll um, make a nice dough. Okay, once you've formed a dough ball, like this, right here, it shouldn't stick to your hands, it should come out nice, make a nice shape. If it doesn't stick very well enough, you can just add a little bit of water to it, but this is pretty good right here. We're going to Remove this. Have to remove the hook first. Older KitchenAid. 
and you're going to cover this with a cloth and let it set for about one hour until it rises or doubles in size about and uh, put it in a place that's about 70 degrees or warmer did I mention that you should well oil the bowl before you put the dough in to rise? I don't think I did. Okay, once your dough has risen, which I'll have to show you in a minute, you are going to want to have two cookie sheets with parchment paper, and you're going to want to lightly oil them. Like so. The same with the other one. Okay, now that you have that done, you are going to want to mix 10 cups of water with 2 third cup of baking soda. You're going to want to put that to a rolling boil. Stir that up a bit. Should be good. Okay. In the meantime, you're going to want to lightly oil your working surface. Make sure it's clean and don't want to get sick any hair dust in your food. Okay. Now your dough should look like this after it's risen. I should be able to press it down like that. Pour this out, like that. All nice and fluffy, yeah. You're going to want to divide this into eight even parts here. I'll get a knife for that. Eight even parts. There's a... Two. three. Now it would be best to weigh them out to 4.5 ounces per thing, but like I said, I do not have a scale, so you'll have to do it like this. Okay, now that you have eight even parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you're going to want to press it out right here to a rectangular shape, like that, that should be good. Roll over like that. And with one hand, start rolling it. Once it's spread out a bit, like this, you can start using both hands. Yeah, hey, hey, keep it over here. Then you're going to keep rolling. Be sure you keep it even. Both sides are even um, in width. And you're going to want to keep rolling till you get to about uh, 24 inches. It's two feet for those of you that can't do math. Yes, yeah, like cameraman over here, caveman, cameraman. Want to be sure your middle doesn't get too thin, so keep working like this, uh, bringing it out. Otherwise, it will get thin and break apart. You don't want that. You don't want a broken pretzel. That won't look good. Almost down here. Takes a while. That should be good. 18, no, nope, a little bit more. The reason you don't need to flour this is because, well, you shouldn't need to flour it, so, yeah. That's about 24 inches, yeah. Now what you're going to do, is you're going to bring both ends over, across to the middle like this. There you go, you have your pretzel shape. You're going to continue doing that with the rest of the eight other uh, blobs of dough. You can stop. You could have folded your uh, pretzels in any shape you want, but I like to go with the original. We are getting ready to put them in uh, our solution of baking soda and water. And while we do that, we're just going to keep these spritzed while we bake them. Or boil them. Keep them damp. The reason we're putting them in 
baking soda is to get their brownness, the mahogany color that everyone knows so well. The reason it makes it brown The reason it makes them so brown is because baking soda is made up of alkali, which is positively charged hydrogen atoms. If it had negatively charged hydrogen atoms, it would be an acid. But since it has positives, it is an alkali, which will help in browning the pretzel. If you don't put these on there, it won't change the texture or the taste, but it won't um, look brown. So you're going to put that in here for... <laughs> About 30 seconds. You don't need to flip. Another alkali is egg, which we're going to put on here later on. No, not egg. Yeah, egg. 27, 28, 29. There we go. We're just going to ladle this out with our spatula. And keep this on the damp cloth. There we go. And usually companies will use lye to make their pretzels brown. And, um, you know, that's not usually something you can get. So, he's baking some. Wait, lye? Sodium hydroxide? The stuff in soap making? Biodiesel production? And even drain opener? Uh, yep. You got it right, buddy. You left one thing out of there, though. Making food and, uh, pretzels. That makes no sense. Well... Because lye is good at uh, dissolving organic tissues and materials, it is used to cure food and, yes, turn pretzels brown. But even at 10% concentration, lye can burn your hand very seriously, just as this picture is right here. That's a pretty nasty burn. But, let's continue. Okay, we have finished our last pretzel. And you know, they, they expanded, their shape's not perfect, but like I said, they can be any shape, they can be regular, they can be hearts, you know, they can be swatch cuz, whatever you like, what your taste is. Now we're going to add the egg on there, another alkali, to achieve the mahogany brownness that everyone likes. And you're going to baste your whisked mixture of egg yolk, or one egg and a tablespoon of water. You're just going to apply it like that. Right about now, you should be setting your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have a slow oven, you should probably have done this before you started folding your pretzels. 